on our life's journey as we seek purpose and connection. We are called, called to place our faith and trust in something greater than our own understanding. We are called by someone who already loves us and offers himself to us, Jesus Christ, his body given daily, his blood poured out for us. We never journey alone in life. Through the Eucharist, we encounter his real presence and others who share our faith. Together, we become one with him in his very flesh. And when we bring his presence out into the world, we can be light for others. This is the gospel call to make disciples of all nations, laying down our lives for others. The time is now to unite our hearts with his for the life of the world. Hi, I'm Sharon Rulier, and welcome to our first 2023 summer edition of the Best of Real to Real. I'm here with my dad, Jim Stefanik, who is a big fan of the show, right, Dad? I don't know what I am. I think I am. <laughs> this summer will bring you some of our favorite programs that aired during this past season, and today's episode first aired on the weekend of October 22nd, 2022. I hope you enjoy. Coming up on this edition of Real to Real, Steve Kiltonic tells us about a collection of essays and meditations by the people who have been most influenced by the life and ministry of Father Hugh Crean. Rebecca Drake brings us the remarkable story of America's first black priest. And the singing priests take to the stage for their first live performance in several years. These stories are coming your way next on Real to Real. Hello and welcome to Real to Real. Looking forward to hearing more on our singing priests. But first, throughout the years, our diocese and the Universal Church has been blessed with many good priests. We will highlight some exceptional priests in our program today, the first of whom is the focus of a recently released book. During his 53-year priestly ministry in the Diocese of Springfield, the late Father Hugh Crean left a lasting impact. In a new book, Along the Way, the life lessons and legacy of Father Crean are discussed by the book's editor, Father Mark Stelzer, along with five other contributors who knew him well. Steve Kiltonic attended the book launch this past week at the College of Our Lady of the Elms, where Father Crean taught. On October 18th, a panel discussion was held at Elms College for the release of a new book, Along the Way, The Life, Lessons, and Legacy of Father Hugh F. Crean. The book celebrates Father Crean's 53-year ministry and includes many of his most memorable homilies and talks, along with six essays by those who were influenced by the priest. The six panelists were also contributors to the book and included the book's editor, Father Mark Stelzer, the Elms College chaplain and associate professor of humanities. A native of Westfield, Hugh Crean was a graduate of St. Mary's High School, class of 54. He graduated from Holy Cross College, then St. Mary's Seminary in Baltimore. Ordained in 1962, Father Crean found his greatest joy as a parish priest, where he left a lasting impact at four parishes, St. Michael's in East Longmeadow, Sacred Heart and Holy Name in Springfield, and Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament in Westfield. He also served in many diocesan leadership positions, including Director of Continuing Education for Priests and Vicar for Clergy. Father Mark Stelzer, who was also the pastor of St. Mary's in Hamden, became familiar with Father Crean during high school when he attended Sacred Heart, where Father Crean and Father George Farland served as co-pastors. Later, as a seminarian and young priest at Sacred Heart, Father Stelzer began a lifelong friendship with Father Crean, 
who served as his ministry role model. Uh, he just had a special way of making priests with whom he interacted, as well as everyone whom he met, uh, feel like they were the most important person in his life. They just showed, you know, the qualities of priesthood, uh, qualities of humility, qualities of service, qualities of inclusion, uh, particularly his respect for women at that time in the church. Father Crean loved the camaraderie of gathering with his brother priests. Uh, to have a meal together, uh, uh, to have conversation, to play cards, whatever it might be, maybe go to a movie, play golf together. Ordained during the third session of Vatican II, Father Crean infused the spirit of the council into his parish life and parish community. Father Crean completed his doctoral studies at the University of Louvain in 1973 and became known for his retreats throughout the U.S. and Canada. He gave well over 100 priest retreats, uh, retreats to sisters, and many of these retreats explored the major themes of the Second Vatican Council and one of the constant themes to which he returned is the roots and the realities of what it means to be a priestly people. It was through his homilies and talks that Father Crean comforted and uplifted parishioners and even strangers. During the 1990s, he spoke with Fathers Stelzer and Farland about his hope to one day compile his discussions in a book. Between the demands of being the pastor of you know, large parishes and his other diocesan responsibilities, he just never was able to get that book compiled. Father Crean developed Alzheimer's and left full-time ministry in 2004. In retirement, he lived at Providence Place where he was chaplain. In 2012, the 50th anniversary of his ordination was celebrated at Blessed Sacrament. Father Crean died in 2015 at the age of 78. The more I thought about his wishes that it would be good on the occasion of the 60th anniversary of the Council to be able to fulfill his wish. The 27 homilies and talks featured in Along the Way are taken from a variety of events. Family was very important to Father Crean, and he enjoyed vacations in Rhode Island with his sister, nieces, and nephews. There's several homilies that are quote-unquote family homilies, homilies he delivered on the occasion of his mother's funeral, uh, the death of his brother Billy, who he was very close with. Uh, there are many talks that he gave on the occasion of anniversaries or ordinations or funerals of his brother priest. And in those homilies, we really see the heart of the priesthood and his love for what I call in my chapter, priesthood as a sacrament of friendship. And so his priesthood was a sacred sign that pointed toward that gift of friendship. And at the same time in his priesthood, friendship became real. It became incarnate. Father Crean always reflected on St. John's Gospel of the Last Supper. That, according to you, became a real model of priesthood for all of us. Uh, the service of washing each other's feet, of serving one another, especially the less fortunate. Father Crean was a professor of theology at Elms for seven years and later served as a trustee and honorary degree recipient. According to Father Stelzer, students and faculty loved him on campus where he was affable, approachable, and insightful. His influence on the college and the college community, individuals in the college has been um, so important that we wanted to um, honor um, his legacy and remember, um, memorialize his, his influence of, on the college. In 2021, Elms College endorsed a proposal to edit and prepare Father Hughes' manuscripts for publication under the auspices of the St. Augustine Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture. Father Stelzer spearheaded the collaborative effort. During the book launch, each panelist read an excerpt from their essay reflecting on Father Crean during a rapidly changing church and world. Sister Jane Morrissey talked about her family's close ties with the Crean family in Westfield and St. Mary's. I could see him as an altar boy lighting the candles, especially at benediction, where there were so many candles to light. And I thought, did he become that light in our eyes? Sister Mary Johnson gave the inaugural talk at the Hugh Crane Distinguished Lecture Series in 2019. She and Father Stelzer were classmates at Sacred Heart School where they knew Father Crean. She called him a master builder of bridges. I think his enduring influence for me is that he could be a bridge builder instead of a, of a destroyer. He could create instead of, of tear down and he could bring people together instead of tearing them apart. William Crean, Father Crean's nephew, shared some thoughts of Uncle Hugh. We know him as an uncle first, then priest. I think what was so special 
about him is that he combined both in how he approached his ministry. He never forgot his roots. To this day, Crean carries with him his uncle's homily that was delivered when his father Bill died 29 years ago. All proceeds from the book will benefit the St. Augustine Center for Ethics, Religion, and Culture. For Real to Real, I'm Steve Kiltonic. Father Kareen sure was a very gifted priest, and we have more information on how you can obtain this book on our website, iobserve.org. October is the month of the Rosary, and recently the first ever Eucharistic Rosary Congress was held in our diocese at the National Shrine of Divine Mercy in Stockbridge. Bishop Byrne participated in the final day's celebrations, and Carolee McGrath has more. On the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary, Bishop Byrne led the closing procession on the final day of the Eucharistic Rosary Congress at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy in Stockbridge. For seven days, October 1st through the 7th, Eucharistic Adoration was held inside Our Lady of Mercy Oratory on the Stockbridge campus. Bishop processed from that chapel to the shrine where he led the rosary and celebrated the final Mass. The Rosary is a school of our Blessed Mother, through our Blessed Mother to Jesus. And as we contemplate each of the mysteries, we are concentrating on our Lord, and we are concentrating on our Lord, especially through the eyes of our Blessed Mother. Jean Pollock, a mother of 10, organized the Eucharistic Rosary Congress. We pray specifically for peace, for reparation, and for um, conversion. And, um, it seems like it's very much needed, eh? The response has been wonderful, but we had around-the-clock coverage. This was the very first time the prayer vigil was held in the Diocese of Springfield. The volunteers were wonderful. We had a packed chapel 24-7. Um, so what, what a grace. Father Chris Alar is the Provincial Superior of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. The members of the congregation are known for promoting the message of Divine Mercy from Stockbridge. We knew that Bishop Byrne has been wonderful in promoting this time of the Eucharist in union with the USCCB's request to reignite a love for the Eucharist. So no better way to do that than adoration with the Rosary. The Eucharistic Rosary Congress began in Poland in 1979 before Pope John Paul II's historic trip there. The communist government was trying to limit sites that he could visit, so the whole trip was in jeopardy. And then the Catholic people of Poland began to pray. So a group of lay people said, I think we're gonna pray about this. So they did this very thing. They had seven days of Eucharistic adoration around the clock. The rosary is play prayed at the top of each hour. Here at the shrine, 33 years later, we, because it's the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy, we also pray the Chaplet of the Divine Mercy on the half hour. And lo and behold, John Paul II was allowed in the country. Our Lady brings us closer to her son, but she also is our dignity and our destiny. She shows us who we can be. And so it is that she shows us how she brought Christ in the world and says, now, in the Eucharist, he gives you himself. Bring him out to the world. The Eucharistic Rosary Congress also fell during the Diocese of Springfield's Year of the Eucharist, a time to reignite the faithful and help people understand that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist. For more information on the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy in Stockbridge, go to iobserve.org. Reporting for Real to Real, I'm Carolee McGrath. And there's still much more ahead on Real to Real. Rebecca Drake brings us the remarkable story of America's first black priest. And the singing priest performed before a sellout crowd. These stories and more are still ahead on this edition of Real to Real. Like Catholic TV on Facebook. Once you're there, you can join in on discussions, make friends with other Catholic TV fans, watch behind the scenes videos from the studio, and stay up to date with the Catholic world. All this at Facebook.com slash Catholic TV.
Hi, Mom. What are you doing today? Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence, an ideal rental setting for retirees to continue their active, independent lifestyles. We have bright one and two bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, restaurant style dining, and wellness and entertainment programs. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700. Well, Dad, I know a lot of people know that you've been a beekeeper for a long time and you've seen a lot of different summer seasons. How is it going this year for the bees? It's going better than when it first started. I thought we were going to lose our bees. But getting back when I first started, I didn't know much about bees. Just bought some bees, put them out in a hive, and I got all kinds of honey. Now there's all kinds of problems with bees. Varroa mite, varroa virus, bears. Yeah, lots Vandalism. of mm -hmm. And the rain that we had. And the rain, that, that's the most things that kept the bees inside the hive. So uh, you didn't get any honey if they can't get outside. To... Yeah, well, we'll get, we'll get some honey this year and we'll bring it to the biggie and everyone can come see yeah, you, right? I hope they come and shake hands with me and Sharon and maybe I'll give you a bag of candy. All right, well, let's watch some more of the show, okay? Our Lady of the Cross Parish in Holyoke recently hosted the one-man show, Tolton, From Slave to Priest, a play about the nation's first black priest. The live-action multimedia story was brought to life by St. Luke Productions. Rebecca Drake was there and has this report. An enthusiastic audience at the Pope John Paul II Educational and Social Center gave actor Jim Coleman a standing ovation for his portrayal of Father Augustus Tolton in St. Luke Productions from Slave to Priest. But Coleman's dedication to the sainthood cause of the nation's first black priest does not end when the curtain comes down. I'm attached emotionally. I'm invested in Father Tolton. I'm praying for his cause. I, I want to be part of his cause. I have taken the mask off and allowed myself to share his story all over the country. As audience members greeted Coleman after the performance, they embraced both the actor and the message he embodied. It was awesome. He was a dynamic actor, but more so, he preached the word. He used God's word and how he ministered to people, not just the black people, he was ready to minister to all people. And like he said, God is the human race, not one race, but the human race. And his message was loud and clear. Conventional Franciscan father Albert Scherer, pastor of Our Lady of the Cross, was inspired by the story of Father Tolton and how he overcame racism with the support of his mother and an Irish priest, leaving the audience with a powerful lesson. I think that we just have to be open to all people, welcoming to everyone. It, it, it doesn't matter the color of our skin, our religion. It just doesn't matter that we're all created in the image and likeness of God. And Parishioners Lee McGarrigal and Nadine Mikowski also left the performance committed to the goal of eliminating racism. I think it showed that also they did, they did start going to his church. So once they saw who he was and what he was, they realized that it didn't matter. We're all the same. Color doesn't make a difference. We are all the same. And we should treat everybody with dignity, respect, and love. Coleman agrees that all people, not just those who are subject to racism, have a role to play in the mission of equality. We need everyone to step in and share and be strong because we are all one in Christ and we have to work together. An invitation from Father Augustus Tolton to all who seek justice for the people of God. In Holyoke, I'm Rebecca Drake. Finally tonight, after taking a hiatus for several years, the diocesan singing priests held their first in-person concert 
to a capacity crowd at Pope Francis Preparatory School in Springfield last Sunday. The concert included 14 priests and benefited the Retirement Fund for Religious. Dave Martin attended and has the story. The singing priest started out strong performing the 70s classic Sing. Father Francis Riley, pastor of St. Jerome Parish in Holyoke, told the audience the concert was in memory of Monsignor David Joyce. We had that beautiful uh, tape of him singing that song, Tura Lura Lura, an Irish lullaby. But it's that good spirit that he always had, and I think we just wanted to honor him because his loss is a great loss for the diocese because he was such a good priest. The first half of the concert consisted of inspirational songs. Here I am, well, we are priests, so we wanted to just glorify God by our songs, and that's really the songs that were chosen, but in a sense that people could sing, that songs that they're familiar with. I will break their hearts so strong, give them hearts for love, love, love. Songs always make me joyful, they always bring out the joy in me. And sure, I know some people have always said, oh, they like to see me smiling and all of those. So as long as it comes naturally, that's what happens. So I, I try to do that all the time. Oh, Father Ryan Rooney sang a moving version of Ave Maria. Dan Kane played piano during the concert. Fred Marion from the Dan Kane Singers also made a guest appearance. The singing clergy members celebrated their love for life, being a priest, and entertaining parishioners. The second act, the singing priest wore more relaxed attire to sing some fun pop and folk songs. Singing is one of the ways we express how happy we are being priests, not just being the parish, um, but having things like this. And people know that, you know, like the songs that we sung, some of them were from the 60s, the Beatles songs, Johnny Cash and all of those, knowing that, yes, priests do appreciate things like this too. Retired priest Father John Tuohy made his debut because Springfield Bishop William Byrne offered an invitation to all diocesan priests. He was grateful to play guitar after not doing it for decades and also sing. I love uh, blowing in the wind. Peter, Paul, and Mary, that's my generation. Mm -hmm. And uh, sure, how great though are, uh, we sang that at my dad's funeral, so that was, uh, that was very moving to sing. Audience members in religious vocations were acknowledged by Father Riley. We wanted to give it a worthy cause, and, and surely the retired sisters and priests and brothers, uh, they can use the money, so 
it's a great donation for the welfare of those who gave their lives to the service of God in the church. People love to join in song together and their voices sound great and even at the end song when Dan Cain uh, invited the audience to sing that song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. We know the song so well, but it is a prayer for the, the world at this time. Let me walk with my brother. Father Riley added that since St. Augustine said, He who sings prays twice, they were singing and praying and all had a good time together. For Real to Real, I'm David Martin. And for this week, that's our summer best of edition of Real to Real. Be sure to keep up with all of the latest news on the Catholic Church, both here in the Diocese of Springfield and around the world by heading over to iobserve.org and check us out on Facebook. We are at Catholic Communications. My dad and I will see you right back here next week as we continue our look at some of our favorite episodes of last season on Real to Real, your window on the world around you. See you then. Real to Real is a production of the Catholic Communications Corporation, funded in part by the annual Catholic Appeal and the support of you, our faithful viewers. Our family is made up of every race. We are young and old, rich and poor, men and women, sinners and saints. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We establish orphanages and help the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing relief and comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other scholarly or religious institution. We developed the scientific method and laws of evidence. We founded the college system. We defend the dignity of all human life and uphold marriage and family. Cities were named after our revered saints who navigated a sacred path before us. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have consistently guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church. With over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith, for centuries we have prayed for you and our world, every hour of every day, whenever we celebrate the Mass. Jesus himself laid the foundation for our faith when he said to Peter, the first pope, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. For over 2,000 years, we've had an unbroken line of shepherds guiding the Catholic Church with love and truth in a confused and hurting world. And in this world filled with chaos, hardship, and pain, it's comforting to know that some things remain consistent, true, and strong, our Catholic faith and the eternal love that God has for all creation. If you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. Ours is one family, united in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are Catholic. Welcome home.